I'm out here today with a, a, another YouTuber, Miss Gypsy Jewels with uh, Zero Discrimination. And we are out here today at the Russ County Treasure Hunter Association uh, Annual Silver Hunt. And uh, we're at this 1903 beautiful colonial plantation home that they let us come out and hunt this and hunt the grounds afterwards, you know. And so it's a beautiful scenery, as you can probably see from the aerials that I just put in there. Uh, but uh, Gypsy was good enough to uh, be our guest speaker or our guest host here with us today and she was kind enough to come in and, and do a little interview that we can get to know a little bit more about her. And I want to ask her 10 questions and questions I think that you would uh, ask yourself. And so Gypsy, let me give you question number one. Sure. Uh, while many of your fans know, uh, know the story about how you got involved in metal detecting, there may be some that don't know how you got involved, how long you've been doing it and stuff like that. So share with us a little bit, what got you involved in this hobby of metal detecting? All right, sure, Michael. So uh, about 21 years ago now, time flies. So uh, it's been about 21 years. I was visiting a beach town in Texas and a couple were walking up from the beach. I was going into a souvenir shop and they had a metal detector in their hand. And I just happened to stop and say, hey, did you have any luck? Uh, and they go, sure. And so they pulled out some, a handful of finds out of their pouch and they had uh, a handful of coins. They had uh, a ring and a little pendant in there. And I was just like, wow. And um, I said, well, how long were you out there metal detecting? And they said about two hours and I, I was just, two hours and you found all that so I was uh, needless to say I was intrigued so I thought to myself very next time I come to the beach and you know I had that mental ad attitude where I'd only seen metal detecting really on a beach uh, in the past and uh, not ever really been around metal detecting or known anyone that metal detected so um, I was like next time I come to the beach I'm gonna get a uh, metal detector so um, it wasn't but a couple weeks after that, I went to Radio Shack, bought my very first oh, metal detector. High dollar one. <laughs> high dollar. It was actually $129. And back then, that was a lot of money for, for me. <laughs> and um, it just had the little meter on it. And um, went out and found, uh, I think, a quarter and some change and a key. And uh, I was hooked. But uh, just enough to be intrigued and, and to want to know more about metal detecting, what other metal detectors were out there, and um, not long after that I started researching and then found a local dealer and bought a, uh, my very first Garrett metal detector, and then from there it kind of kept evolving into, uh, well, uh, what's the latest machine on the market, and, and before you know it, um, I had all kinds of metal detectors. Uh, and then we ended up moving to the beach town, uh, Galveston, Texas, and um, ended up starting a, um, a metal detecting club there. And uh, I ended up opening up my own metal detecting store there for a while and selling my metal detectors and renting metal detectors. So it, it kind of kept evolving. And um, anyway, um, from there, that passion just grew and um, led me to now. 21 years later. I learned something this week about you, and uh, your name is not really Gypsy. <laughs> Did y'all know that? Maybe it was just me. Uh, her name is not Gypsy, it's Michelle. And uh, so tell us a little bit about how you got this name, you know, Gypsy Jewels, and, uh, and where, how'd you come up with zero discrimination? Okay, my nickname, well, of course, is Gypsy. Most everyone knows from my YouTube channel, Gypsy. Um, and uh, my real name is Michelle. And uh, Years ago, I was co-owner of a, a resale shop uh, called Eclectic Gypsies, and uh, my nickname kind of came up. I was one of the gypsies of the uh, resale shop, so uh, gypsy stuck, and then ever since it was gypsy, and then I sold jewelry for a year, so jewels kind of kind of went with it, so it became gypsy jewels, and then um, that's how that that started. It's definitely a catchy, <laughs> it's catchy. catchy name for you two. People it, can't forget that they name. They can't forget you know? it. Well, what about zero that. discrimination? So zero discrimination, uh, most of you that metal detect out there know that uh, zero discrimination is basically a mode that you metal detect in on your detector. Uh, basically it means uh, you do not discriminate out any metal when you detect. You're using all metal mode basically. Uh, zero discrimination but in as you know um, a lot of people ha uh, discriminate 
uh, in life, and they uh, look down upon people regardless of their uh, race or um, for me, when I first started, there wasn't as many women in the hobby. Uh, so, um, zero discrimination. I just thought it fit and just stuck with it. And um, then came up with the logo later and uh, stuck with it. So. Well, that's, again, it's another you know, interesting name that's kind of, you know, on YouTube, it's kind of eye-catching, you know, and you don't forget that kind of name. Well, speaking of YouTube, I looked last night and you are now approaching 5,000 subscribers. Congratulations on Thank that. You. That's a major it. first milestone, you know. They say the first hundred's the hardest, but now you're almost to 5,000. And I was just wondering, now that you've gone from zero to 5,000, and now that you're involved with Garrett and being one of their representatives and going out to these different shows and stuff, how is that now affecting and, and changing your life, if it's affecting and changing your life? Okay. Uh, yeah, I would say it's definitely changing my life. Little did I know when I started my channel, I just basically wanted to start it to share uh, the passion and the hobby and when we preserve history the way we do and uh, and some of my knowledge that I've gained over, uh, and I'm continually learning. We always continually learn with the new technology coming out um, in the market with new detectors and uh, I learn new things all the time about metal detecting, but uh, I wanted to basically just share, and little did I know it would turn into almost 5,000 subscribers and uh, turn into uh, more traveling and, and uh, being part of a representative uh, field tester for Garrett, uh, and that's just recent, so I'm starting to travel a little more, so it's definitely uh, changed that part of my life uh, with more travel, and now I'm actually, this is all I'm doing is it's my full-time thing now as of January, so yeah. excited about that. And we excited to have you with us here at Rush County Thank Treasure you. Hunters and, and hanging out with me yesterday. And I had a blast. Oh, that, that was really hot. Did. That was fun. Uh, uh, speaking on the same lines of YouTube, uh, you know, there may be some uh, new viewers out there that, are, uh, that maybe want to be, be starting up a new YouTube channel. What would be some, uh, some advice that you could give them to, uh, to help them to be successful in, in, a, in a good startup YouTube channel? Okay. Something, things that you have learned. Yeah. When I first started, I just started with the basics, uh, just basically sharing uh, my story. Then I went on to sharing what metal detectors I was using and then sharing a, a few little tips of uh, knowledge uh, out in the field and then just sharing my finds. And I really wasn't that worried about editing or any of that that comes along with it. Um, in the beginning, I was just sharing and uh, having fun with it. And then now it's become a little more to where I have to pay a little more attention to what's going on with my channel and I would say uh, the best advice I can give you is just be yourself, get out there and enjoy yourself. And as long as you're enjoying yourself and having fun, and then you will start to gain knowledge uh, ab about editing and about um, all the other things that come along with YouTube. And um, have fun. main thing is have fun with it yeah. and then just be yourself and then the rest will come. Yeah, I think stay true to yourself. That I is, think that I is, definitely. That is what, don't don't pretend. Don't that, pretend. Just, it's just right. be you. Just be you. If you're quirky, be quirky. If yep. you're dorky, be dorky. If you're and cool, I'm be little, cool. I'm, I'm a little crazy sometimes, yeah. but as long as we're having fun, that's, that's what That's what it's all about. Now, now that you're doing this in January, are you doing this now full time, treasure hunting and making videos? And that's pretty much all. In, I'm in a doing. week's time, how many times would you think? How many times do you go out in a week's it time? It really, yeah, depends on, of course, the weather. Right. Mother <laughs> that's Nature cooperates. Mother Nature. Lately, we've had a lot of rain back home, um, and then I kind of divide it up. Uh, I would say um, in the winter, it's more uh, relic hunting and land hunting. And in the summer, I love hunting in the water and in the rivers like you and I did yesterday at the lakes, uh, swimming holes. Uh, and then where I live, a lot of, um, hopefully a lot of river videos coming up this summer. Mm. So I'm excited about that. I love being in the water. Cools you off in the heat of the summer and it's a great place to find the jewelry as we, as you know. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I'd love to come down there with you this, yeah, this year and do a river video do a with you. River video, definitely. Definitely cooler water, for sure, because sure. the lakes are going to get very hot here before too long. It'll be um, very cool. 
what about if you could if you only had one type of detecting? Oh, I know that's hard for that us. Is so hard. You know, there's so many different types of detecting. You know, and uh, but if you only had the choice of one type of detecting, what, what would you say? And then you can share the second one too, or you know, whatever. Yeah, and that's that's funny because uh, when I very first got started, I did mainly beach hunting and surf hunting, and water hunting, because I lived on the uh, south, you know, Texas coast. So. Um, and I loved it and I learned all about surf hunting, water hunting, using a PI machine in the, in the salt water and all that. But then at the same time, something there's something about digging something of the past and where you can trace it back in the history and the story behind it and then who held that and if it connects to a person. Uh, there's just something about it and uh, even better is when you're uh, able to donate it to a museum and, and be able to sh keep sharing that right. with others and so I'm pretty divided down the middle that's tough because I love the history part but then again I love in the summer I love the water mm -hmm. water hunting so I'm kind of torn there out of all the the years you've been detecting you know the 21 I know this is another difficult question but what would you consider your greatest find That's, that's again, hard to say. I have several favorite finds. I guess one that sticks out in my mind because the Civil War was just such a, uh, it's something in our history here that's so deep and people love digging the Civil War and I really wasn't expecting. I was detecting in a really old homestead and um, I got an Eagle um, officer's belt plate. Nice. Uh, from the Civil War, and I have to say that's one of my favorite finds. Now, with that being your greatest find, what would be maybe the, the most unusual or the weirdest <laughs> find that you, you know, we come across some weird things we out metal detecting. We come across some weird, one, the one that sticks out in my mind the most, uh, I was actually in Galveston hunting the beach, and you get one of those loud blasting sounds and you think it's an aluminum can and you dig down and I get this brass vase looking thing. I'm like, what in the world? So I get in the car and I'm looking at it and I tip it over and there's a coin on the top part of the vase. And it turns out it was a ceremonial yin coin and it was sealing some ashes oh, no. inside. <laughs> So and you dug up a dead person. I dug up a dead person, a, a Japanese soldier. Oh, my. And uh, I didn't know what I had found. It Still, I didn't know. And it wasn't until that coin fell off and I see this sawdust-looking stuff in there, and finally it dawned on me what I had. And then I did the research on the coin and, and then found out what it was. Okay. So what they would do is they would spread part of the ashes out to sea, and then the rest uh, they would put inside the uh, vase and then toss it and they have washed in. Now, along with the, the greatest find that you found, uh, this question can kind of go along with that. What would be the greatest day of metal detecting? I think it kind of goes back for me, um, and it really wasn't one of my best days as a current, but you know when you very first get started detecting, and this is years and years ago, I was hunting an old farmhouse in West Texas and that day I ended up with two uh, walking liberties at two different properties. And I remember my very first walking liberty, uh, my brother was actually doing the digging for me. And I got in this signal and he's down there digging and he's like, Michelle, Michelle, it's, it's silver, it's silver, it's silver. And he drops it in my hand and I'm sitting there and I start jumping up and down and I won't tell you what slipped out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm jumping <laughs> up and down and I couldn't believe it. And then later that day I was detecting my grandmother's yard and I got another walk in Liberty half, and then a Mercury dime, and then my first tax token. Oh, wow. And for me, that was... Big silver day. Yeah, and that was actually that first walk in Liberty was my very first silver coin, too. Mm. So to find a silver coin, your first silver coin, I have that sticks out in my mind. Yeah, that, that, that's a lot of silver there. That's a, that's a good day. Well, what about... You know, we always have moments when we're out there in the field or in the urban, you know, areas. And, you know, we, what about the scariest moment that mm -hmm. we, we have metal detect? You can <laughs> this is one moment I probably was truly scared. Uh, I was water hunting in Galveston. And my family was up 
on the beach you know where the towel line is and stuff playing and i was of course out in the water and all the sudden there's places especially after storm sometimes there's big holes that come up dips in the and i dropped off into one of those and i must have been that much deeper and when you have all that equipment tied to you i had that first thought you know i'm gonna drown i'm gonna die doing what i love you know but luckily i took my scoop and i i hit it as hard as i could on the bottom and pushed my way out of that big hole and uh, i would have to say that was probably one of the scariest moments for sure wow that would be i've, I've done that too i know how that, that is you know <laughs> now this next question um you, you you have to be very careful on the answer uh -uh. of this one okay uh -uh. Uh, but I like to ask this on all the interviewers that I do and uh, is what brand of metal detector <laughs> do you use and, and, and maybe and, and answer the question why do you use okay that? sure so uh, I've used been lucky enough to use many detectors over the years especially once I became a dealer years ago when I owned a metal detecting store I had people all the time hey try this white's newest you know DFX this whatever was new on the market you know at the time and so I tried about every brand I even used mine lab for a long time uh, but one of, after my Radio Shack that very first machine I uh, bought a Garrett and um, I found my first silver ring with that my first you know I did actually find the one ring with my Radio Shack yeah. <laughs> so that was my second ring but um, I think over the years I really like uh, the Garrett, um, the customer service you get from Garrett, Definitely. it's always been above and beyond um, the customer service that I got, uh, and then it it was important to me, American made product. I bought stuff made all over. In fact, I used I've had a mine lab that I used for years, and I actually still own that machine. Uh, but I've always kept going back, and another reason why I kept going back to Garrett is the price, what you get for the price. Uh, for some of the other brands, um, I would buy one detector, and I could just about buy two of the waterproof detectors for that one mm -hmm. detector. And to me, that gave me a detector to use and a backup right. machine <clears throat> for the same price. So I think you get a... Ba I'll put it yeah. this way, a bang, good bang for your buck. Yeah, right. And uh, like I said, the, the quality, if something goes with your, wrong with your machine, you send it in and they have it back to you like that. Yeah. It's fixed, and I've had them once. Uh, I had uh, one that I had for years. They ended up um, sending me a brand new machine. It, it's just the service there is just... You can't beat well, it. Folks at Garrett are really good. Not only are they U.S. based, but they're Texas based too. Right. You know, and maybe We're in Texas, Texas, yeah. Texas grow, uh, yeah. grew up. Uh, I was born in San Angelo, Texas, and and uh, lived all over Texas, and yeah, just supporting our own local right. companies here in Texas as well. All right, one final question, and uh, tell us a little bit. How long have you had your YouTube channel, Zero Discrimination? Okay. And uh, maybe you know someone else again that is starting up their new YouTube channel. Uh, give them some advice of uh, how they can gain more viewers and subscribers okay. and things like that. Sure. So uh, I've had mine now uh, a little over two years. Um, and um, when I very first started, I didn't really know. But I think what helped me the most in the beginning is sharing my videos on social media. Uh, and uh, word of mouth is the best. Sharing it with your friends. and ask them it's okay to ask mm -hmm. hey you're my friend Sh do you mind sharing my video uh, I think that helps uh, more than anything is and then also uh, on our social medias we there's so many metal detecting groups that will allow you you know to share your videos right. and I think that helped me a lot and then also in the beginning being able to interact with the ones that do watch your I did in the beginning I did a lot of live feeds where I would just do uh, question and answers and we would talk about metal detecting finds and I think that helped a lot to be able to interact with the viewers and then more and more you'll see those were the same ones that were watching your videos regularly right. 
and we're commenting and um, always commenting as, as often as I could. I'm not able to as much anymore uh, that I did uh, in the beginning, but trying to answer their questions if they had a question, etc. And one thing about uh, a gypsy is what you see is what you get. And uh, I had the privilege to be with her yesterday. We spent 10 hours in the lakes and, and all day to day together. And she's a true, genuine person. And if you had had a chance to go over and, and check out her YouTube channel, Zero Discrimination, I encourage you to do that. It's uh, family friendly, it's, it's clean. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, someone out doing some treasure hunting. And, uh, and it's interesting and never know what you're gonna get with her. And, but it, it's good. So I encourage you to go over there and check that out. And anything else, Gypsy, I appreciate you sitting down with me and giving me a few minutes to talk about these questions and answer them for us. And anything else you want to uh, maybe plug your, um, your stuff and how they can contact you. Okay. And All I want to say is, uh, first off, is to thank you for a wonderful uh, weekend. I enjoyed every bit of it. And um, thanks for sharing. And Even though uh, I beat you in the ring count? Even, even though, <laughs> you know, I'm usually finding rings like crazy, but... Um, this time he smeared me on that <laughs> ring king he's the new ring king so um don't tell tim that I, i'm not gonna tim tell sailor tim. <laughs> tim are you watching yeah this? <laughs> so um he's the ring master master so i'm ring just king the king and ring master. yeah there we go oh there we go so uh but i just want to thank you all for uh, those of you that watch our channels and um we appreciate all of our subscribers and um we can't Keep the, keep the videos coming without you and your support and just to say thank you all for that. And uh, just a good way to um, reach me is of course on my channel, comment. Uh, you can always email me. I usually use my email uh, link in the description. So you can email me with any questions you have. Uh, also you can hop on over to my face, face group, group uh, zero discrimination group and um, just uh, hop on there, become a member, and feel free to share your videos, your finds, uh, any information you have uh, on an upcoming hunt. And um, I love to see them. I love to see what everybody else is finding. A lot of times they're finding a lot better stuff than what I'm finding. So. <laughs> well, maybe if I come down to your place, you can you can redeem yourself in the river yeah, in your we're, territory. We're going to have a new challenge, yeah. river challenge. It's new, coming, y'all. Y'all watch coming. out. Well, thank you, Gypsy, thank for coming you. and being part of uh, this day with us at our at, as our club, and thank you for just hunting with me and and uh, so her her description uh, her link will be down in my description. So just go down there and, and look at that and, and click on it and go over there and give her a thumbs up and comment and and tell her you're a new subscriber. And uh, if you're already a subscriber, give her a message. Tell her, appreciate all that you do. Well, until next time, let's do a high five. Thank and let's you. Go, let's go dig some stuff. Yeah, let's go dig some stuff. Digging here and searching there, find the treasures everywhere. We'll spend the day like gypsies being free. 